All right, hello there. Welcome back to another wee bit different video. It has been a long time since I've recorded. Uh, reason being is because with the news of Shohei Otani uh, going to the Dodgers, my sports mood period went and then just but we're back now, ready to go, making videos on our normal schedule, including all the Overwatch videos we do or Ranked or anything in general that we do. NBA Sporkle, of course, and of course, NBA and NFL Weekly. So with right here, what's in front of us, we got NFL Weekly. If you're not familiar with how we do things here, first half of the video, or I should say first portion of the video, we just talk about the standings of the teams and the big headlines of the week. Second portion of the video, we dive deep into two teams with five bullet points. First two are positive, next two are negative. The fifth one's a question to ask whether or not they can succeed in their goal of the season. Okay, so first up here, AFC East. The Dolphins taking a huge L, and I mean huge L against the Titans. They're up 14 with four minutes to go. Just an absolute blunder. Defensively not being able to get the job done. Offensively not being able to do anything without Tyree Kill. It was just a whole lot of bad. Uh, Bills, huge win against the Chiefs, and what was a funny ending, I will say. Not so much controversial because it was Kadarius Tony was offsides. Chiefs, of course, at eight and five. Broncos country at seven and six after the one and five start. Absolutely phenomenal in the past six games, especially on the defensive side. Uh, Chargers with Justin Herbert out of the season. There is no hope left. Uh, Raiders, well, there hasn't been hope for a minute. <laughs> AFC North Ravens taking a huge win, putting themselves ahead of the Dolphins because the Dolphins lost. So as, as of right now, the Ravens are the first seed in the AFC, which is huge because you get that first round by, you get to avoid that first playoff game. Uh, Browns, Joe Flacco looking really solid, slinging the ball. And I got to say, I'm really impressed with him coming out of nowhere, just seemingly taking over this offense. Steelers, as we discussed earlier, you know, a uh, huge loss against the Patriots. You know, they really need to bounce back this week against the Colts. But the Colts also need to win here too. So both teams are going to be fighting really hard. Uh, Bengals at 7-6 and six, winning two in a row. Jake Browning, kind of impressed with how that's been going so far. Uh, Jaguars leading this division. But I'm not going to lie, it's closer than I thought. 7-6, seven 7-6, and six, seven and, six, and then 8-5. and five. Granted, the Colts are down Jonathan Taylor. Texans could be down CJ Stroud. But the Jaguars, you know, Trevor Lawrence is not playing healthy right now. Looking at the NFC side, the Cowboys taking a massive W against the Eagles. Uh, definitely beat a lot of the, you know, allegations that they can't beat strong teams. And I will say it's their only win against a really good team. Granted, they've only played like three good teams, which includes the Eagles twice. But it was a huge win because they won convincingly. Dak Prescott played amazing. Our defense played great. You know, it was just a great win for the Cowboys. And as a Cowboy fan, that makes me happy. Finally, it seems like we've got something going for ourselves. Uh, Eagles 10 and three though, just taking a loss. Giants five and eight, Tommy DeVito with all the memes of him and his agent. And really people just enjoying this little underdog story. It's kind of cool. NFC West, uh, it's no surprise the Niners are where they are. You know, doing a power rankings a couple of, you know, I want to say it was about a month ago, maybe a month and a half. I talked about the Niners, and even though they lost three in a row, they're still really, really, really good. Better than the likes of the Seahawks. And, you know, NFL.com had the Seahawks ahead of the Niners at one point, which to me was blasphemous. But here we are. Niners are 10-3. and three. Uh, Rams almost being 7-6 and six instead of 6-7. and seven. They could have taken that game against the Ravens. NFC North, Lions 9-4 and four in their division. Looking like they're going to take it. I mean, they're two games ahead of the Vikings. And I, I would think they have tiebreaker, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Packers taking a huge L uh, against the Giants, putting them at six and seven, worsening their odds for that wild card race. And the Bears, you know, they're five and eight somehow, you know, winning two in a row, looking pretty solid. And as I said, the last NFL Weekly, last and definitely least, Buccaneers, Falcons, and Saints all tied for that division lead in terms of record. Buccaneers have tiebreaker, followed by Falcons and Saints, and Panthers, well. There are the Panthers. Okay, on to my favorite part of the video. This is where we dive deep into two teams, as I explained earlier in the video. But anyway, first team, drum roll, please. Ba -ba 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 -bum, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. Now they're eight and five, and there's a lot to say about them, but let's go straight into it. First bullet point, we got Mahomes Magic. 
You know, no matter what anyone says and no matter how the team does, you can't blame it on Mahomes. This dude makes passes that really no other quarterback in the league can make. Scrambling, 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 cross body throw. What is that? Who's there? Travis Kelsey for a 20, 20 yard gain, 25 yard gain. Patrick Mahomes has never been the problem. He's always been the X factor. You know, if you looked at Patrick Mahomes numbers, you'd actually be a little disappointed with how he's doing this year. I mean, Buffalo, one touchdown. Green Bay, one touchdown. Las Vegas Raiders, two touchdowns. Philadelphia Eagles, two touchdowns. Miami Dolphins, two touchdowns. Denver Broncos, zero touchdowns. And then Chargers is where he had four touchdowns on October 22nd. But if you're noticing a trend here, it's he's not really exploding, right? I mean, even if you look at the passing yards, 271, 210, 298, 177, 185, 241. That LA Chargers game where he had four touchdowns, it was 424. But there's a consistent pattern here in that he is just not exploding. And if I'm being honest with you guys, it's not his fault. You look at the receivers, you're not going to blame those numbers on him because of what he's having to work with. And we'll get to that in the later bullet points. But the point is, this guy is putting himself and his team in a position to win. He is a big reason why they're 8-5, and five, of course, along with the defense, which we'll get to eventually as well. But I just can't stress enough, man. No matter how good a quarterback you are, and we know Patrick Mahomes is definitely the greatest quarterback in the league right now, you need somebody to catch the ball. And even with the people he's working with, to put up these numbers is still saying something. But that's gonna lead me to the second bullet point. Their defense has been extremely impressive. So I'm gonna pull up their stats right here and I'm gonna tell you guys you know, where they rank. In terms of total yards, they are sixth best in the league. In terms of passing yards, yes, passing yards, they're 185th, sorry, they're 185 yards allowed per game, which is sixth best in the league. Rushing yards, they're 20th in the league, which is not great at 115. But in terms of points allowed per game, they are averaging 17.5, which is third best in the league. Their down conversion rate is quite literally middle of the pack. They're 16th. But the defense is limiting opposing offenses passing attack. Another elite team with high potent offense, the Dolphins. Tua only threw for 193 yards on 34 pass attempts and only a touchdown. So their defense has been doing amazing things in terms of stopping the pass. Looking at the Eagles game, Jalen Hurts only threw for 150 passing yards. That's just bad. But at the same time, they're just stopping a lot of really good quarterbacks. Same thing with uh, Josh Allen. 42 pass attempts, but only 233 passing yards. This defense has been absolutely incredible and is everything Patrick Mahomes could have asked for, except this next thing which leads me to the third bullet point which is something that you know i'm gonna do something i never do which is create a third bullet point that counts as a fourth bullet point <laughs> because it is, it is that bad our third slash fourth bullet point is what receivers wr stands for wide receivers but what receivers are there for this guy to throw to let's pull up the receiving room give you guys all the names as much as possible, and then you judge for yourself. You tell me. So Travis Kelsey is a tight end. We're not going to count him. All right. You got Rasheed Rice, who's actually pretty solid. Okay. 59 catches, 663 yards. Solid season. He's a rookie, by the way. Then you got Kadarius Toney, who rarely plays, but 25 catches, 164 yards. And he's got how many drops? Let me, let me count the drops on all of these guys. Okay, so we're actually going to count all the drops on this team. Travis Kelsey has four drops, but he's Travis Kelsey, so that's okay. Rasheed Rice has eight drops. Kadarius Toney has four drops. Jarek McKinnon, he's a running back, but he's a receiving running back. Three drops. Sky Moore, who can't get open. When he's open, he has only one drop. But, I mean, Sky Moore is only 21 catches, 244 yards on the season. Uh, Justin Watson, three drops. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, two drops. Uh, McCall Hardman, one drop, and tight end Blake Bell, one drop. That's fine. But there is not a lot of people here to throw to who are consistent. And this entire receiving room is full of just full of not so good receivers. And it's not just the one drop or two drops on certain players. It's the drop that leads to other teams' momentum. For example, Kadarius Tony, week one, dropping a pass that led to an interception. For a touchdown, 
You look at the Eagles game, Marcus Valdez Scantling dropping a touchdown to put them ahead. You look at this past week with Kadarius Tony. I know it's not a drop, but lining up offsides, like there's things out of Patrick Mahomes' control that he just can't do anything about. And you can see him scrambling in the pocket, looking, 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 trying to drag out the play to see if any receivers can find themselves open. And it just constantly hasn't worked. This offense hasn't been what it's known to be and a lot of that is because it's on the wide receivers. Anyway, let's get to the fifth bullet point. I know that it was weird mashing the three and four together, but bullet points three and four are supposed to be the negatives. I can't think of a serious negative outside of the receiving room. Everything else seems fine. Their running game is strong with Isaiah Pacheco. Offense line is good. Uh, defense, obviously, we just talked about. You know, they're solid in all facets except receiving. <laughs> but anyway, getting to that fifth bullet point, can Patrick Mahomes save them? You know, Tom Brady, for as great as he was, could never do things by himself. As great as you are in any sport, uh, it is highlighted probably the most in football and baseball that you can't do things on your own. I mean, you look at the Los Angeles Angels having Mike Trout and Shoy Otani, couldn't make the playoffs for six years. Uh, you look at this Kansas City Chiefs team, Patrick Mahomes. Fortunately for him, though, his defense isn't like years past. I mean, the defense has been absolutely stepping up you know there were some really solid teams that they are flat out limiting example the eagles example the dolphins it just seems like there's a lot of struggles right now for this team uh, i don't know if andy reed can fix his way out of this one i don't know if mahomes can fix his way out of this one i think the difference between last year and this year because you know people were saying oh they really miss tyreek right now yeah they won a super bowl last year without tyreek um chiefs fans will say hey we did it without him we can still do it without him and yeah, that's true. But last year, it just felt like your receiving room was much stronger. A healthier McCall Hardman, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, Kadarius Tony, who wasn't playing this bad and not having to rely on guys like Sky Moore and Justin Watson. Like it just, it just feels like a mess this year. Going on to team number two though, drum roll please. Ba -ba 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 -bum. We got the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys is a team that I've been a fan of since I was like seven, six years old, super, super, super young. And ever since I've been a fan of them, we've taken nothing but else. Nothing but else. You might take a small W, 10 steps forward, we're gonna take 15 steps back. You know, this season's giving me hope because Dak Prescott, you know, I didn't think he could take his game to this level, but he's been playing phenomenal. We're just gonna go ahead and get to the first bullet point here though. We got Dak Attack. This offense is surrounded by Dak Prescott's presence from here we go and you can hear it on the audio visually you can see this guy always doing the most in terms of energizing the team finding cd lamb fighting uh jake ferguson finding brandon cooks the occasional michael gallup uh tony pollard sometimes out of the backfield you know throwing it to him Dak prescott has been nothing short of phenomenal i mean the dude is just putting the ball in places they need to be at the right time always and you saw it in this eagles game he delivered and you gotta love his energy. You gotta love his leadership. Dak Prescott has been the man and he has firmly put himself in the discussion of the MVP race. You take a look at this five game winning streak they got going on right now. New York Giants, 404 passing yards, four touchdowns. Carolina Panthers, 189 passing yards, two touchdowns, but they didn't need to throw a lot because they blew him out. Uh, Washington Commanders, 331 passing yards, four touchdowns. Seattle Seahawks, 299 passing yards, three touchdowns. Philadelphia Eagles, 271 passing yards, two touchdowns. And in all of that, he only threw one pick against the Giants. But in this five-game winning streak, he's thrown for six, 10, 13, 15 touchdowns and one interception in this five-game winning streak. Now, that is phenomenal. Insane from Dak Prescott, something I, I just, I didn't expect. And my biggest fear for this team was we can beat down on bad teams all we want, but can we beat good teams? And they beat the Eagles. Second bullet point though, we got an elite defense. Now I'm not saying impressive defense, surging defense, rising defense, okay defense. I'm saying elite. This defense, there's reasons why we beat down on bad teams really bad is because let's, let's just break down some of the stats. In terms of total yards, we are second in the league. Limiting, limiting, I'm struggling with that word today, but limiting opponents with even taking the ball down the field. Passing yards, fifth best in the league. Rushing yards, 13th best in the league. Points, fourth best in the league. 
third down conversion rate, 12th best in the league. But not only that, someone named, I don't know, Deron Bland, NFL record for most pick sixes in a season. Not only that, the Dallas Cowboys forced turnovers out the hoo-ha. Not only that, Micah Parsons is a beast. Guys like D-Law rushing the quarterback, getting to them, forcing Aaron throws. Not only that, Stephon Gilmore locking up opposing elite wide receivers like A.J. Brown this past week. This defense is insanely good. And if we had Trayvon Diggs, I think it would be even more scary, of course. But I can't stress enough how impressed I am with this team in general. It seems like they always, always deliver. I think their first really bad performance of the season was against the Seahawks. But even then, the Eagles this past Sunday, holding them to 13 points, Commanders 10 points. But we, again, we do force turnovers. Like we just flat out force turnovers. Third bullet point here, getting into the negatives. One thing that people can hold over the Dallas Cowboys is they've had a weaker schedule. There's been a lot of games where it's just not really too worrisome. Uh, let's get into it. Let's bring up the strength of schedule. This is something a lot of people talk about. Now I'm glad we beat the Eagles to kind of quiet down this argument, but our strength of schedule has been relatively easy. So game one, Giants, easy game. Game two, Jets, easy game. Game three, we lost to the Cardinals, but that was an easy game. Next game was the Patriots, of course that's easy. Next game was the Niners, we lost, bad. That was an elite team who we played and we lost bad. Chargers, Chargers are not a good team, so they're expected to win and they did. Rams, at the time the Rams were like, what two and four some some not so good number but yeah they destroyed the rams eagles they lost to which was the second elite team they played at the time which was worrisome because that made us 0 two giants we beat panthers we beat commanders we beat seahawks was the first game since the eagles where we played a team with a positive record and we barely beat them so i was really worried but then we kind of quiet down those again those allegations that we can't beat tough teams you know beating the eagles but Ultimately, the strength of schedule has been relatively easy. It feels like these are all games that are extremely winnable. And not only that, but favorable. Uh, I guarantee if you look at DraftKings odds on some of these games, like we're very, very favored. So it's not necessarily a knock against the Cowboys themselves because uh, it's out of their control. They can't control the schedule. But if you wanted to bring up a weaker schedule as to why there's, their record is so good, I would understand why you're saying that because going through it, you're like, yeah, some of these teams are just Oof, not not great granted they're still a really good team whether you think their weak schedule has to do with the record or not fourth bullet point though is the cowboys have way too many penalties and by way i mean they're leading the league they're leading the league in penalties 97 penalties on the year 97 how many games have they played <laughs> Let me find this real quick. They've played 13 games. They have 97 penalties, dude. That is, oh, that is so nasty. It's one of those things to where, you know, as you're watching, you notice like, hey, you know, the Dallas Cowboys do, you know, penalize themselves in some really stupid plays. For example, defensive holding, offensive holding, plays in a gate touchdowns, and you're just like, you know, I think I'm noticing a trend here. And then, yeah, you see the stat and you're like, yep, that makes sense. They they have a lot of penalties. That Seahawk game was filled with penalties. It was a gross game to watch. Like it, I was literally like, damn, this is what I'm having to watch right now. NFL, NFL refs on the screen every two goddamn seconds. And the Eagles game, I, I don't remember how many penalties we had. Um, but I just remember the Seahawks game most recently being really egregious. But yeah, the Dallas Cowboys are leading the league in penalties anyway. They got to cool it down, get more disciplined. Just some of the simple things. Fifth bullet point though, this is the most important bullet point to me and to mostly everyone. Is it different this time? Is this time different? Years past, we've seen really talented Dallas Cowboy teams with really strong potential to do something, to make a run, and they fall short. Last year against the Niners, got blasted. Years past with Tony Romo, 
when you thought we could just do something. By the way, it was a catch. But anyway, years past the Tony Roma when you thought we could do something. It's just been, this has been disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. And it's not just the Dallas Cowboys. There are several teams in the league that haven't won shit in the past forever. But when the, when the spotlight is constantly on the Cowboys, people shit on them the most and they want them to lose the most. And they clown on them the most when they don't fall through in the end. I'm not saying we have to win a Super Bowl for for it considered to be a success, right? I think a success would be at least, you know, making it to the conference championship because it says, hey, we've come a really long way from just losing in the divisional round, losing in the wild card. I would say the ultimate goal for sure is the Super Bowl. And any Dallas Cowboy fan, if they were to like hear me say that and say NFC Championship is a success, they would totally laugh and say no way. But just from a fan perspective, just from a fan perspective, we haven't even fucking gone there in forever. It would be nice to not lose in the divisional or the wild card race for once, because that's all we've been fucking doing is just losing when we get there. And I understand that sometimes things are out of the control. For example, Des Bryant caught it. It was a fucking catch. I watched that live. I lost my mind. But it's stuff like that that's out of our control. But again, I just want to get there. Give, give, give us a chance. Put us in a position where we can be like, oh, we had a chance. Eagles last year, they had a chance, right? They put themselves in a position to where they could get there. We're not even fucking doing that, dude. It is it is beyond frustrating to not give ourselves an opportunity to see what this team can really do in the craziest moments, in the brightest of lights, when literally everything's on the line. It just seems like we can't really see what this team can do and teams in, teams in the past. So I ask myself this quite often. Is this time different? I feel like it is. I feel like Dak, Dak Prescott right now is in his prime. I feel like our defense right now has never been this good. Feels like all the pieces have been put together. Our receiving room is amazing. CD Lamb is definitely a top three receiver in the game, arguably. Top three. I would see guaranteed top five, though. You can't tell me otherwise on that one. But even Brandon Cook's filling in a phenomenal role for us. Being able to snag touchdowns, but just the important 30 yard catches that, you know, kind of shift the momentum and give us, you know, more life, more energy to the crowd. And it, it's the little things that he provides like that. Tony Pollard not looking like his last year self, but doing good enough because his offensive line is great. Rico Dowdle, you know, doing the little things, getting a little bit more run lately as well, too. So I like this Cowboys team. I think that we can make the NFC Championship. Obviously, the goal is a Super Bowl, but I'd be happy just to just to put ourselves in a position to where we're not one and out, you know, in the playoffs. Like, I don't want to see one and out. I don't want to see two and out. Like, if we make wild card, let's get two wins, wild card and division. If we make division, let's get a win at least. You know, I'm tired of this one and out, two and out kind of shit. Let's do something. But anyway, that is NFL Weekly. Uh, these videos easily take me the longest to make because... Editing them is like three, four hours easily. Even though I'm only recording in terms of time for like 45 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just a long editing process. And some of you might say, well then edit faster. Well, if you guys want it to be done a certain way, and if you want the graphics that pop up, it takes longer to export. But anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the state of the NFL or really anything about NFL Weekly, or if I miss something, or if you agree with something, or disagree with something. But anyway, as always, this is uh, Ali Been Different. Ali Been Different. And we out.